What the hell is this? Doesn't anyone send emails here? Miles, hopefully you don't mind, but we've decided to rebrand the show to reflect your insistence on overblowing simple subjects. We think it's a good match. Hope you don't mind. Oh, mother... Over the years, customizable weaponry has become increasingly common in video games. From barrels and sights to flashy skins or decorative charms, gun loadouts have become a fully garnished smorgasbord of destruction. But in Rainbow Six Siege, weapon attachments have become a point of contention for its fanbase. And no other has drawn more debate than the ACOG. The ACOG is... Uh... It's everything wrong and good about the game, pretty much, is how you put it. People love it. It does aid long range, for sure. It can be abused. It's a sight on a gun, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, I don't think it's like that much of an issue. In the perfect world for me, there would be no ACOX in this game at all. So what makes this simple sight such an issue? Well, let's take a look at it. The Advanced Combat Optical Gun Sight was originally designed in 1987 by American manufacturer Trigicon, and it's no stranger to first-person shooters. In most games, the ACOG is a pretty unremarkable, fairly standard tool that's useful in medium-range engagements. But in Ubisoft's tactical shooter, where a one-bullet headshot from any gun is enough to kill, it's much more than that. The ACOG is the highest magnification scope in the game, and having it equipped can often be the difference between losing a round and clutching it. One friendly oh. operator remaining. Op four eliminated. In Siege, sight lines, angles, and distance are fundamental to engagements, and Ubisoft has attempted to reflect that with the design of the operators themselves. Attackers typically have access to longer range assault and marksman rifles, which assists their need to hold distant angles while working their way through maps to objectives. Defenders, on the other hand, are equipped with shorter range weapons like SMGs and shotguns, forcing them to creatively ward off attackers using the environment and their utility. Anyway, this wasn't always the case. When Siege first launched, the ACOG was available on a few strange weapons. Most notably, Sledge and Smoke's SMG-11, aka the Sniper-11. The rapid-fire automatic was supposed to just be a reliable secondary weapon for the two ops. But when it was paired with the ACOG, it became something else entirely. There's another one. There. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it. Right. Why? Why? <laughs> why? Ubisoft, why is this a thing? Incredibly, it took almost a full year after release before Ubisoft decided to remove the SMG-11's ACOG. And following that update, debates raged on about whether it should have happened and what exactly the game's design philosophy really was. Ubisoft's Craig It's Epi Robinson pointed out that the change allowed the devs to expand the game's design, but some people weren't happy with that answer. What did you expect? <laughs> Although Sledge had a good primary that also had an ACOG, Smoke players argued that he was being neutered because their preferred weapon was being nerfed. But the SMG-11 was only the beginning and much larger shockwaves were felt the following September when Ubisoft returned for the ACOGs of both Bandit and Jaeger. Even though by today's standards, both the MP7 and 416C Carbine are still strong weapons, when paired with a long range sight, they were transformed into a spawn peeker's wet dream. Bam, bam, bam. One construction, watch the rush. Despite Ubisoft's best efforts at trying to make the overall game more balanced, the community felt betrayed. So much so that thousands of players even signed a petition pleading for both operators to get their ACOGs back. But those cries fell on deaf ears. 
Fortunately for Bandit and Jaeger, the fact that they're both three-speed operators with a wealth of utility ensured that they remained competitively viable. However, that doesn't mean Ubisoft was above rubbing salt into fans' wounds by memeing on the nerf's anniversary in 2018 and again in 2019. Trying to spawn peak as Jagger? <laughs> No! Now, not all ACOG-related nerfs have been met with disdain by Siege's fanbase. In fact, back in March when Ash's R4C was stripped of its ACOG, the act was celebrated by casual players and pros alike. Um, good riddance. Uh, Ash is a disgustingly oppressive operator. I don't like to play as Ash or against Ash. And I think, um, I think generally it didn't really change Ash that much. Ash is still like terrifying. I mean, I was one of the people who told Ubisoft to remove the Ash Agog. Like, I thought it was too powerful. Kanto around the corner, the oh! double! What a clutch, Kanto! While the Agog had felt like more of a luxury for both Jaeger and Bandit, in some ways it felt more integral to Ash, Siege's iconic hyper-aggressive fragger. You can run and That's That's Jaeger. Well, it's more than just an ACOG because when we're talking about operators, we're talking about a kit. We have their gadget, we have their weapon loadout, then we have the attachments for that and then we also have speed. So when we're looking at somebody like Ash, where she's really quick, she has a really good kit with weapons, and then we have an ACOG on top of that, how do you balance it? So one of the levers we have is, okay, do we remove this attachment, and is she still strong enough to stand on her own? The answer to that question post-nerf is an emphatic yes. Despite losing the advantages it previously enjoyed at all combat ranges with the ACOG, her R4C is still a fucking beast of a weapon. The fact that Vital went down to the Maestro is really huge too because there's not going to be a lot that he can do from the grave. Can't move those cameras anymore, can't use anything. Vertical coming up and gets a triple kill. That's two and four for the round. Vertical! While your average Ash main was likely but hurt about the change, high-level players were far less bothered. Her pick rate might have dropped, but surprisingly, her win rate actually improved. Even though the most dangerous ACOG wielder in the game lost it from her best gun, some of Siege's best players think that even more drastic action should be taken. In the perfect world for me, there would be no ACOGs in this game at all. It's too viable in too many situations. It's just way too powerful in my opinion, and the fact that every attacker has it, they can just hold angles and it's not fun in my opinion. Yeah, we're in an iffy spot right now. I personally like the idea of having a more equal ground where Let's say, in theory, only DMRs had ACOGs, or only like support players like Thermite Thatcher had ACOGs, because they're, they're holding angles, you know, they're doing their job, they're staying alive, it makes sense. But giving Intrafaggers extremely powerful weapons with an ACOG and the, I guess, option to play dynamically. You know, we look at Sledge that has SMG-11 holo, amazing weapon, and LA5 ACOG, amazing weapon. You can pick every fight in the game and have the advantage. It just seems unfair. So why doesn't Ubisoft just completely get rid of ACOGs if they're such a pain to balance? Well, the problem with that approach is that the pick rates of certain operators with less utility value would most likely suffer. And who supports that theory better than Doc? A three armor, one speed support character who, because he has an ACOG, has established himself as Siege's reigning spawn peak god. Nice. I think they, they're shooting up front a little bit. How's that? Pop for last time. Hold on. Made spawn peak Ace. <laughs> <laughs> and while Ubisoft has nerfed Doc and Rook's damage outputs over the last year, their pick rates have remained relatively high, and you have to look at the ACOG as the cause of that. Why would you play a Doc, for example, if you weren't bringing an ACOG? I mean, yeah, you can heal yourself, you can heal teammates. There is some utility there, but people who play Doc are playing for the ACOG. Essentially, Doc's ACOG has become his most valuable asset, and without it, he runs the risk of becoming irrelevant because his design doesn't really match Ubisoft's vision for the game today. We learned a lot in our game. You know, it's going on five years now. These are operators that we're talking about have been out for a long time about what makes a good gadget, what makes a good kit for an operator, and how do they fit in a meta or break a meta, maybe change it in a different way. 
So when we're talking about Rook and we're talking about Doc, these are people that we've developed a long time ago and we had no idea how this game was going to move. Thankfully for Doc players and ACOG enthusiasts, it doesn't seem like Ubisoft has any plans to abolish the optic entirely. Instead, a shift in direction for the game's map design might be a viable alternative solution. I know we put a lot of weight into something like ACOGS, when a lot of the time we're dealing more with medium to close range combat in our game. Especially the way with our maps being developed now, we're closing rooms in, you have to dedicate yourself to a room, and open up longer line of sights aren't as common. It's becoming more of an interesting play on what attachments you should bring. Some pros already share this sentiment, and if their mastery of the game is any indication, there is a life after ACOG. I just use it because I'm comfortable with it, but I don't feel like it's like absolutely necessary. I mean, it's all really preference. Like sometimes, you know, there's got to be like a point where it's like, okay, I should definitely run this because it'll just give me the upper hand. But um, there's people out there that just use strictly one X's, like Reflex Hollow, Red Dot, and all that, and they do just fine. It's all, it really all just comes down to preference and whatever you feel comfortable with. Regardless of the ACOG's future, there's no question that it's massively shaped the game siege is today. But in spite of that influence, it's safe to say that certain people wouldn't miss it if it was gone. Generally, from a map design perspective, the less ACOGs, the better for me, that's for sure. So what do you guys think of the ACOG situation in Siege? Should Ubisoft remove it from Dock like they did with the other ops? Let me know what you think in the comments below. But one thing I'm wondering is, who's gonna lose their ACOG next? Move out! Because you're a liar and you're a devious player. Thanks for the memories. Trap is broken. It's time for you to go. Did, are you a peanut allergy? I do peanut Excellent. Can you give me some peanuts? Can we get you to clap? Thank you. Okay. So, first one. Because you can't clap. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> Give me back my egg clog. Get good, bitch. Can't miss it. You shoot everything. 